Hey guys, I've got another update about the latest version of my firmware. I'll start with a look back at plain PIDs and what it is that we're missing and why am I doing all this work in the first place. Um, then I want to talk about the individual features of my firmware. And uh, then I'll also show you how to tune it for your own board. And at the end, I want to just briefly revisit the cascaded PIDs and tell you why I had to abandon it. So let's get started with the features. So why not just plain PID control? The main weakness of PID control in general is that it is lacking compensation for terrain changes. And so the only way to make it work in typical conditions is to make the board really stiff and then it can actually be quite capable but a stiff board is not everyone's thing and uh, I personally really don't like it and it's not beginner friendly and has also downsides even for pro riders even for really experienced riders there are some big downsides to ultra stiff boards other issues are there's no distinction between braking and accelerating then when you're trying soft PIDs, and if you're saying, I don't care about hills and grass and whatnot, I just run, I live in a flat town, it's all flat, and you do soft PIDs, once you got get them as soft as like a pint or an XR even, it leads to scary behavior at speed, and soft PIDs will make it hard to keep your board just level when you're going slow or when you're trying to just kind of stay in place. Also, you have nose dips when turning that's also not taken care of by PID control. Now, here is an overview of the main changes in Beta 51. The most important is the ride quality improvement. A softer feel is now possible without sacrificing capabilities. There's also more consistent board feel in all situations. The torque response now delivers less aggressive tilts of the nose or tail and what I'm the most happy about is that it is less rider weight dependent. My son and I can now share the same settings. How did I do it? The third version of ATR, adaptive torque response. Now it's really adaptive terrain response. More to that later. I'm using non-linear PIDs. I also have asymmetric PIDs and asymmetric torque response. And then there is yaw-based turn tilt, more on that later as well, and many small improvements. So, I'll dive into the main ones. Adaptive terrain response. The big change to the original adaptive torque response is that it's using acceleration instead of current. So, we used to just look at motor currents and use that as the primary driver for set point changes. Now instead, I use acceleration, which I do derive from the motor currents, but I translate those into an expected acceleration and I compare it to the actual acceleration and use that to determine set point changes. Also, the tilt is now configurable, whereas in the old version, if you increased your torque tilt strength, it also resulted in a more aggressive lift of the nose when you're going up or lift of the tail when going down. Now the nose tilt is freely configurable. One of the big improvements is there's faster response that makes the board more capable. It's partly because of faster reaction, but also because of additional increase in board stiffness with increased terrain response. So if you're going up a really steep hill, your PIDs can nearly double compared to what you have on flat ground. Oh shoot, down there's a cake. The next big improvement is the non-linear PIDs giving you a more stable board. What I discovered is when I played around with soft PIDs that matched anything like the XR, it became really hard to keep the board level and it was just not very pleasant to ride. It felt kind of unstable. The solution I applied is I used stiff PIDs for the first one to two degrees. So the P is as high as eight or nine even, but only for the first 1.2 degrees, for example, or I think I have it at 1.3 degrees. That means that when you're level and you're not really accelerating or braking, then 
the board feels really stable it stays right there but if you are accelerating you can still lean forward nicely if you're braking you can still push the tail down as far as you want so these stiff center pids or the center pid boost allows you to have soft pids without the downsides of it and yeah last not least even tail grinds are easily possible even for light riders like my son who's only 90 pounds or 40 kilograms the other big new feature is the asymmetric pids i've been wanting to do that for a long time but i struggled with it it wasn't as easy as i first thought and uh, it took me a while to actually get it right but now it really is as intended and you can have braking PIDs that are much lower than your acceleration PIDs. So the result is tail grinds are no problem, even for lighter riders. Tail taps are possible, which is something you would do when climbing a curb. You bring the tail down really quickly so your nose goes up and um, that does not result in a emergency brake type situation, but um, Instead, it's, if it's just a short tap, you bring your board up and you can do your curb nudge. That also works. Also, there is no loss in downhill trail capability because the adaptive terrain response overrides soft braking PIDs. Then there's also lots of other improvements. Some of the key ones are the carving support, also known as turn tilt. It's now fully yaw based no longer based on the roll of the board, meaning it doesn't matter how much the board tilts side to side, but how much you're actually turning. And uh, that means that there's no more side effects in rough terrain, which is something that bothered me for a long time. And another highlight of that feature is that you get the strongest response towards the middle and end of the turn. And so in the beginning, it slowly starts building up the pressure and the longer you push, the more it pushes back up to a certain point of course another feature is uh, progressively stiffer pids this used to be called the booster feature but uh, it now goes in two stages so at angle one the pids get stiffer at angle two it gets twice as stiff and uh, this is basically like the boost feature but a bit more progressive and um, also configurable. Then the startup behavior has been improved. Quick start is now smoother and at the same time more aggressive. So you can easily start on steep hills, which is what I really was tuning it for to make sure that you get all of the power as quickly as possible, but without any jerk in the beginning. Now, the board is so smooth in starting that I sometimes wasn't sure was the motor engaged or not, especially my, my son, lighter riders, will maybe tr not always correctly engage the foot sensors. So when you're on a steep downhill and you're starting, you really want to know whether your board is engaged or not. So there is a click that I can create when the board starts. This is essentially a small current or not even that small, 10 to 20 amp current that is emitted for one millisecond in one direction and one millisecond in the opposite direction that results in a noticeable click um, without affecting the ride quality at all it's just you start you feel a click and you know the board is engaged now then i've introduced current limiting and d-term limiting especially when braking this helps with tail grinds, also for lighter riders. Uh, it also helps with tail taps. So if you're doing a, if you're trying to do a curb nudge and you want to lift your nose really quickly so that the tail taps down nice. on the ground, this is now easily possible with this new type of limiting. I've also added a new thermal limit tilt back as well as an improved high voltage tilt back behavior. Thermal tilt back means that if your MOSFETs are two to three degrees from hitting the throttling range, you will start getting tilt back and um, that way you know to slow down and let them cool down. 
Also, when you're booting the board, if you don't have a beeper, I now do a little wheel wiggle to let you know that the board is ready to ride. So if you don't have any kind of LEDs or a beeper to tell you that the board is ready, the wheel wiggle will definitely let you know. Unfortunately, this is fairly important because this stupid VESC boot procedure takes forever so that you do want to know when it's finally done. It takes like 15 seconds or so, very noticeable. I have no idea why it is so long. I don't feel like debugging that, but um, at least when you know that it's done, then you can get on without second guessing. And uh, the last feature I wanted to mention is that there is no more app-induced nosedives, which is something that easily happens, happened to me a couple times where you have the app open, you haven't locked your screen, and maybe put it in your pocket and accidentally you end up hitting the right config, um, right app config, right motor config, and that conveniently shuts down the balance app and restarts it. So um, that always resulted in a nosedive if you were riding and that now instead is blocked and I just issue a triple beep to let you know, to alert you that this was attempted. Now, how do you tune it for your own board? The good news is that Beta 51 is much less weight dependent than previous versions. It is still heavily affected by the KV of your motor. So I've tested Beta 51 with a fun wheel, which has a KV of about 15, and a float wheel, and that has a KV of 17. Now, the PID adjustment that's required is essentially proportional to the KV. Higher KVs need stiffer PIDs. So I use P equals 3.5 for the fun hub and 4.2 for the float hub. Also, the acceleration factor, which is essentially the factor between or the ratio between amps and expected acceleration, has to be 16 for float hub and 14 for the fun hub. I have app config XML files for both variants so you can easily load the one that fits your hub. If you have a hypercore, you're doing a one wheel best conversion, your KV is about 14 from what we've seen. In that case, the XML for the fun wheel should work well out of the box. And there's one more I almost forgot. The current limiting I introduced also needs to be adjusted for the higher KV, so about 15 to 20% higher. All right, now what's the story with cascaded PIDs? It looked so promising when I first tried it, and in theory it sounded great, but first the ERPM-based acceleration data was too choppy at low speeds. IMU data, by the way, was no better. So the other reason is cascaded PID control is actually very difficult to tune. You have double the integral windup issues, double the D-term noise issues, and then two different PID values influence each other. So it uh, would have been actually very challenging to tune in real life situations. And the last issue is that I discovered that cascaded PIDs is not the magic bullet that I thought it would be. There's still many tweaks that would be necessary. A lot of the features I've talked about in this video would still need to be implemented in cascaded PIDs. And one of the big reasons I wanted to implement cascaded PIDs is I thought that with a simple algorithm, I could cover all situations magically. But you know, I would have had to uh, still add nonlinear PIDs. I would have had to have asymmetric, asymmetric PIDs. I would have still have to deal with nose tilt management and all kinds of other corner cases. So it really, the main advantage wasn't really there. And uh, combined with the very lousy acceleration data, it just didn't make sense to further pursue it. So instead, I just doubled down on my adaptive torque response approach and actually got it to a pretty good state. All right, now let's go back to my firmware. You are probably wondering how can you get your hands on that? Um, you want to try it out, but uh, unfortunately, you have to be a bit more patient. I'm still working out a few kinks that I'm trying to, to get right, but Hopefully soon I will make it available publicly and there will be affordable pricing plans, definitely less than a dollar a day 
and you can have that firmware maybe also a trial version that is good for 30 days and then causes random nose dives I'm kidding of course it's gonna be free on github and um, I'll let you know when it's available